I started from nothing Never knew where my next meal was coming But I transformed my life I stay one step ahead Mindset of disruption I own the edge This is a drill cast Where I bring the wisdom you need Everyone is selling knowledge I give mine away for free I'm as real as it gets You either love or hate me Best believe I'm major league Bill Hines That's me If it's the thrill cast This is This is This is the thrill cast This is Hello everyone, welcome to the Thrill Cast. With me today, I've been trying to get this guy for years. I mean, we couldn't get him so far, and I almost had to end the show because, you know, this is how important he is. But man, I consider him a, an amazing friend. He's, in my opinion, one of uh, of the two best, the, the team, I would say, that I've ever heard broadcasting sports, uh, motorsports, ever. And uh, all the way from Townsville... Australia. Uh, he is a uh, an announcer for sporting events such as uh, V8 supercars, stadium super trucks, Aussie racing cars, you name it, he'll tell you more about it. But Matt Nolte, all the way from Townsville. How you doing, Matt? It's great to see you again, mate. It's been way too long. Way too long. And I, like I say, to me, you and our uh, good friend, American friend, the bloke, uh, a Sean Sermini, I think have called some of the best races that I've ever heard in my life. And obviously I'm in the races, but then most drivers, we just go back to the hotel and we'll pull it up or we'll watch it in Australia. You can watch it like on Fox or, you know, what's the other, what's the free one? The 10, what's what, what channel is that? It was 10 back in the day. Yeah. 10 play. I think yeah, it was yeah, back yeah, in the yeah, yeah. It's yeah, not 10 yeah. anymore. I uh, know we're a different network now for the free to air stuff in Australia, but yeah, that was a okay. that was an amazing period of our lives, wasn't it? That twenty fifteen. Yeah, I'm like I'm aging myself, right? <laughs> that, that I actually know the free to air uh, television down in Australia. <laughs> I fucking miss Australia. You guys are awesome, but uh, yeah, I was God, I've been Townsville, first place I ever seen a crocodile. Yeah, this is uh, almost as north as Darwin, where you raced as well a couple of times. So we're yes. back here for yeah. the next race this weekend. And it feels normal now. Like the last couple of years, as you guys know, were really, really hard. And uh, we did a couple of back-to-back -back weekends here over the time yeah. in 2020 and 2021. But this year, it feels really, really normal. Well, Townsville, where we stayed, I, I had the dude, Paul, the dude <laughs> Morris, uh, make my accommodations. And I would have in he I don't know let's just say the hotel we were at was walking distance from the track. Well, at least relatively, yes. but I was like, I'll just walk today. It was hotter than hell. Okay. Oh, yeah. and, and, and then there was this like bridge and then there was this fence and I'm looking over. I'm like, wait a minute. In my mind, I'm like, is that an alligator? I'm like, no, that's not an alligator. That's a crocodile. They don't have alligators down here. And I, let's just say me and my uh, helmet bag were booking it. as they say. Yeah. You broke your own lap record to the track. <laughs> oh yeah. I was faster than that than my SST truck. So, um, yeah. So what are you up to these days? Obviously, uh oh, my water went. What are you up to these <laughs> days? Obviously, you know, I, I personally and Robbie Gordon, we all miss you uh, announcing our stadium super truck races. I mean, just some of the, I, I tell people like, man, like I see Lee Diffie doing it, another fellow Aussie. Me and Paul Morris always talk about it, and uh, Karina, all them down under. Like, you're one of the best. That there is, and I'm not just saying that because you're a guest here. We've said it beforehand, and uh, I, I think you're Australia's best kept secret. And I, <laughs> I think one day you're going to get a shot internationally, um, like Lee Diffie had. Um, yeah. Because man, it just what sets you apart from, in my opinion, from all the other type of broadcasters. You do your fucking homework, man. You know everything about every person. Like, I'm watching, and we'll get into it uh, later, but I was watching the NASCAR race, and they're calling, like, Shane Van Gisbergen's name wrong the whole fucking time. It was just killing me. And I was like, Nolte and Serm wouldn't have had that happen. Like, they would have done the research. They would have been, like, new driver. They went to talk to him ahead of time, talk to him, like, what they want to talk about, get their name right, and, and be able to phonetically – talk to him about it You're like just so bring me through like a, a like what do you do prior to like a race or like a nice event weekend 
to where you know, like, and it, like say a V8 supercar could be Aussie racing cars, but it doesn't have to be SST. But tell me, like, because I know you you do the same thing each time. Like, so what do you what prepares you to do your job? So I've developed a pretty comprehensive database, which I've done now for probably seven or eight years uh, since I've been with the supercars coverage. It's when you get the big fields like this weekend, for example, the Aussie racing cars here have got only 40 cars and there's about eight or nine new drivers that I don't know. So you tend to start race week by getting in touch through socials or try and get hold of an email address and and get the groundwork done at least. So when you get there on the weekend, you can go and meet them and do a quick whip around. You don't have the time to stand there in the paddock all week. As you know, like when we were here in Australia doing the, the trucks as well as yeah. the support oh categories and the track commentary. You guys never saw me. You saw me in the morning. You saw me at night time. Oh, I saw you. Virtually handcuffed to a commentary box for the whole day. So I pride myself on that, mate, because I've never raced anything and I can't profess to have been a race car driver. So the next best thing is bringing the, the human interest side out of a person. And there's a lot of cool stories in that paddock that, you know, we were all race fans when we were younger and we all got yeah. to sit on a hill and watch a race or watch it on the TV. And you'd often throw stuff at the TV or go, these guys aren't doing a good enough job. Well, now you're in that position uh, to find out more about them and bring them more to the fans and make it more engaging. So I noticed, so when you announce, okay, uh, it's always, you you let, you kind of just see it and call it. There's no bullshit. There's none of this. And Paul Morris says it, like, he just calls what he sees. But it's it's such an intelligent way to do it. So for every ordinary everyday punter as they say now in america punters is just like the fans that's what they call them down there so um uh, the fans that are watching the race it's it's um and i I was talking to actually i was texting james hinchcliffe the other day and i said man you and lee diffie and the team and townsend bell you're doing a really good job this year because you're just calling what you see and there's none of this extra fluff or flash so it's like you watching the race and you're hearing this commentary, this is what you do yeah. and what, what you, and it's just complimenting and it's not taking away. And all too often, I think broadcasters get in the way of themselves and they yes. take away from their eyes. Yeah. So, and you get caught up in your own little conversation. You don't look at the TV and all of a sudden there's two or three cars in the fence and it really stands out in the TV coverage when yes. that goes on. I, I guess when you have an ex driver in the, in the, in the commentary box, you let them explain more what's going on from a, a driving point of view. Like I color love apart, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the minute I start talking about what they're doing in the corner, it's probably time for me to give it up because I don't know what the hell is going on in turn number two. I don't know the G loadings that are going on. I don't know how much yeah. power they've got coming out of the corner. The driver can stand there and look at the same TV as me, but he'll see a million other things to what I see. So it, it's a good combo having a, a play-by-play announcer and an ex-driver, as long as they can talk. I mean, it's all good saying that, you know, drivers can get in the commentary box and explain, but if they can't talk, it really doesn't bode well. Yeah, that's them. why I think James Hinchcliffe does an excellent job in yeah, color agreed. commentating. And yeah. I like, I like personally like Paul Tracy, but sometimes Paul Tracy is Paul Tracy and he likes to hear himself talk and <laughs> he likes to just, you know, toot his own horn too much, which is fine, but like Hinch is not doing that. Hinch is more humble and both Canadian, by the way. And uh, yeah. like actually, even this the V the the NASCAR race, uh, Dale Junior was there, and Dale's like, yeah, this guy's mid corner speed. Like he can intelligently speak to what yes. the car is doing because he can look at it. Whereas yeah. like like I said, like you said, you you know your limitations, and and you're just like, eh, I'll just back off on that and let the driver call it. If you have a like like if you're in the booth with like a Mark Scaife or somebody, yeah, you're gonna let yeah. him. Like the guys want enough to know, or if Paul Morris is joining you in the booth. You let them take the technical side, and then you're just kind of like explaining to the punters and and making it very entertaining for them. It's funny. Paul Morris was the first uh, driver I commentated with on live TV back in 2015. I knew knew of him, but never had really had much to do with him. And I've never done live TV either. And next minute, he's staying in the commentary box. And as you know, he can be an intimidating cat when you meet him the first time. Oh, big, imposing guy. I was nervous. I was nervous as hell trying to focus on what to do. And then he's standing next to me and I'm like, how's this going to go down? But he's he's always been very, very encouraging. And, and um, he'll tell you if it's not right. He'll tell you if he's not happy with something. And I appreciate that. I don't want someone telling me, you know, you're doing a good job. Paul is not going to sugarcoat anything, Boo. Paul. The <laughs> dude is not going to be like, hey, you did a good job. And he's not going to pat you on the bum Boo. and 
No. He's going to be like, hey, mate, you fucked that up. You shouldn't have done that. Yeah, Paul, like, and honestly, so you know who Nash Morris is, obviously. Very, yeah. Is it surprising how amazing that uh, that boy came out so far? Like, as a person, I'm not even saying as a racer, but as a person, you look no farther than his father, his yep. grandfather, the grandma. I mean, it, it it's not surprising for you as an announcer watching this sport to say, all right, I know the dad, and I know how yeah. the dad can be. Like, there's no bullshit in that family. Like, you're either going to work and you're going to – yeah. Or you're not going to work. And uh, it's amazing to see Nash come out of his shell in the last six to seven years. He was such a quiet kid. Yeah. And then when he started knocking around a bit more at Norwell, you know, this kid's got half a chance. And then just this year he had a race at Phillip Island in a Trans Am car. And, I mean, that really put him on the map. He's, oh. he's an absolute star in the making. He ran with some regular there. It was probably one of the best races I've probably seen in a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think people even like – I think SVG, St. Van Gidsberg, and he put the world on notice. Now, I guarantee you, you weren't shocked. Any of your co-announcers weren't shocked. And the paddock, the whole paddock and area in V8 supercars were like, yeah, we knew Shane would do that. Uh, I think we're quietly confident that it would happen. I think it was the perfect storm, and he picked the best race to go and to run at. You know, it's a, yeah. it's a brand new track. No one had ever raced there before. It was wet, which is always SVG territory. Uh, and, you know, NASCAR haven't really gone to street circuits where a lot of our races, you know, are on street circuits. Oh, so all the time. it was a perfect storm. But, you know, he still had to work for it. It, it wasn't a walk in the park. Um, not at all. But I, I think his future is absolutely over there. And, and I think he'd be a great addition to running in America. And he just looked at home, watching the interviews afterwards, he looked comfortable. He, he looked like he wanted to be there. And I think that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, look, Scotty Mack. And he'd have a friend in there, and obviously they were competitors. But man, he was pulling for him. And I was, I was, as I was watching the race, I'm like, man, I wonder how Nolte would be calling this race right now. Be, <laughs> I was like, he'd be going mental, you know. It was so good. I mean, like, I wanted to finish late Sunday afternoon, evening, like eight o'clock at night. I mean, you can see the downtown Chicago traffic going around with headlights on, and they're still racing. I mean, that's. That's cool, and I think that's put a real spark under NASCAR to, to to get them going again. It looks like it's been a bit quiet the last couple of years, but maybe you know changing it up a bit and taking the street circuits like that. The cars suit that style of racing as well, and you've got to take the that series to the cities and and um, spark it up again. I mean, North Wilkesboro was a a great exponent of that this year. That track sat there rotting away sadly for many many years, and look at that now they've got that rebirth, and I love that. I, I agree with you 110%. I think IndyCar needs more ovals, and I think NASCAR needs more road courses. And I also think that maybe there's an opportunity like at a Long Beach, at a St. Pete, at a Chicago, where not necessarily – some people are saying, hey, let's do a double header. Maybe not a double header, but keep the track built, and maybe NASCAR or IndyCar come back a couple weeks later. Yeah. You know, because you can easily just move some barriers and open yes. it back up for the community, as you know, in street races like Adelaide does yeah. a good job with that. Um, yeah. Gold Coast, like Gold Coast, after the, when nothing's going on at the race during the nighttime, like people are driving down. Like you're like, oh yeah. man, I'm driving on the track. You know, it's yeah. like yeah. in your cab or something like that. So I, I think, would you ever think that V8 supercars could ever or would ever even consider doing an oval? I've always had this dream of them doing it over. When I was younger, we had a track called Calder Park Thunderdome, which was built back in the 80s, which was loosely based off Charlotte. Uh, They ran a world touring car around there back in 1987, and they used the tri-oval as well as the road course. Oh. Um, And then when V8 supercars started, you know, getting momentum in the late 90s, it was floated around that maybe they need to put it on the Thunderdome and have a big high-paying race, but it never really eventuated. And sadly, the Thunderdome is – it's probably – it could be saved, um, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done to do it. I personally don't think they would do it in this current climate, but I'd, from yeah. a hunter's point of view, if I put a race fan, a that fan? Back on, I'd love to set it on oval because that'd be cool. I, I think even if it's just one race a year, kind of like make it like yeah. the Aussie Indy 500 type of thing, yes. you know, an endurance race. Like you got Bathurst, but like the yes. oval complement to Bathurst. I, I think, I mean, listen, I've been in Australia many, many times from 20, what are we, 15 
up until right yep. before 20, so into 2020. Yep. You guys are nuts as far as racing fans. Like, you love racing. I, and I went this one time. And I saw it like I just was, you know, you go out in different places. They were racing fucking lawnmowers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like a I, dirt track. They're nuts over here. And for the size of the country, it's yeah. it's amazing how much racing's here. Like now I've been to the US a lot. Yeah. Uh, we're really a, a hobby farm when you put us next to America, but yeah. we push well above our weight over here with what we've got. And, you know, the, the motor racing culture is still quite high here. For sure. And that's, to me, it's like, okay, people, like a lot of people think SVG or Sh Scotty uh, Mack and even Dixon are Australian, but they're not. Obviously, Will Power's Australian, one of the best yeah. ever to do it. But, I mean, it's all down in that hemisphere. and But they all come to Australia to kind of even enhance and learn their craft. I know when we were at Norwell, we've had, uh, actually, Shane was working with other Kiwis, like kids, like we're 15, 16, and they, he was kind of mentoring uh, this kid. Yeah. And uh, he was there working with them, so he's giving back. But man, the it was no shock to me when I saw Scotty Mack jump in an Indy car. I'm like, man, if they saw how uh, they race with V8 supercars, and then what Shane did, and I was just like, man, I, I kind of wish you were at that race because I'm watching the Chicago race, and I'm like, man, Nalty and Paul Morris yeah. would love to be here. And for I'm watching it, and I'm like, where would the jumps go? I love that track. Same. I did the same thing. I was like, oh, we could put a jump there. Yeah. I was like, we could come out of here. <laughs> and it, part of it reminded me of Detroit Bell Isle Correct. mixed with like a Long Beach because it had that like carousel type thing going around. Yeah. I don't know if it was a fountain or a half circle, but yeah. I'm just like, and man, the way SVG was flowing through that section, he almost kind of made the one, it was like a left-hander and a right-hander and he just came around and it, Whereas other drivers were just like stopping and make it. And I'm just like, <laughs> the one guy, Haley goes, yeah, he wasn't really taken off for me. Uh, yeah, he was. Yeah, he, he was. Fucking, <laughs> yeah, he, he fucking pulled away now. And the last lap, I think he's like, was like, all right. Like if there was five or 10 laps to go, I think it would have got even worse. But like the last lap, he was just like driving Miss Daisy. I say he was just cruising. And just it makes it look easy, doesn't it? It's he's very smooth. He's and you know, we said many years ago, you know, he's a wet weather expert, and we interviewed him one day on the grid, and he goes, No, nah, I hate the wet weather. And it's yeah. just like, Well, you do all right in it. So But see, uh, that's funny cool. because people say that about me or on dirt tracks. They're like, Oh, he's a dirt track specialist. I'm like, I fucking hate it. But yeah. I think I think you I think people like that, you're just like, All right, I gotta pay attention even more. And 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 you're just worrying about other shit and not like the stuff that clogs your brain that takes your focus away. So you're like hyper-focused, yeah. which makes you better. So like, yes. actually, you called my first ever podium on the dirt, and it was my first time ever on the dirt. And, and I had just met Paul Morris, and he's like him and uh, uh, Smiley. Who's Smiley? Uh, Greg Gardner? Greg Gardner. They're like, mate, you just got to fucking send it. Yeah. And I'm like, ah. and then Paul's like, that's not how you do it. And I'm like, oh, like you said, he's imposing. I'm just getting yeah. to know this guy. And he's like, tell him the big guy. Yeah. And I'm just like, time out, motherfucker. I, I, I'm not even a real race car driver. Like the yeah. like media, like I just picked this up. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah, go easy on me. He's like, fuck you. If you're going to do it, I'm not going like people don't understand. Like I've been, I came to this party late, but I've been trained by Paul Morris. Alex Prema, EJ Vizo, Robbie Gordon, shit, Sheldon yeah. Creed. So it, it's kind of I'm funny. No names, are they? <laughs> and and but then when new people come into the SST series and I kick their ass, they're like, "Oh, I thought I could beat Heinz," and they they like they get shocked. And yeah, you've seen yeah. it happen, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it's a. Uh, it's a great life, that's for sure. Um, you know, whether you race it or whether you call it or get to be around it, it's it's very, very – we're very lucky to be in this position. Um, I was sort of down we couldn't be at Chicago. It's one of the ones I wanted to see on the weekend. We couldn't make it happen this year. I was, I was lucky to get to the Indy 500 this year. I hadn't been to the States. I was just going to you know, bring that up. You're such a – like, <laughs> like a lot of – obviously, a lot of my listeners are going to know you because they're SST fans and racing fans and sport fans. Some of the music fans may not know you, but um, – 
I was gonna say you're such a huge racing fan. Like you on your own dime, nobody paying for it but you. Your hard earned money. You you come to the Indy 500 almost every year. You know for the past few years, and uh, sometimes bring Nathan with you or whatever. Nathan Kayser. And uh, but this year you came alone. You were like, "Fuck it, I'm showing up." And then yeah. like I watch your socials. And you're literally having the grand old time, you know, you, yep. you, you meet friends, you meet people, you got your beer going, you got the food going. So tell yep. me about that. Like with IndyCar, like how, um, like, like for the, somebody that's never been there, how would you explain Indianapolis motor speed with the Indy 500? For every time I come back here and tell people, uh, it's like going to Bathurst, which is our Indy 500, yeah. but in times, uh, 10 times higher. And I mean, Bathurst still gives me the chills. When you drive into Mount Panorama here in Bathurst, it's amazing. And I get the same sort of feeling going into Indianapolis. You know, every time you fly in and you can see the track from the sky and how big the place is, yeah. it never ceases to amaze. So even when we're going there to do the, the TV for stadium trucks after the events and you just yeah. drive past the place on a weekday and it's just this behemoth of a facility. But how they fit 350,000 people in there, and they do it so easily, mate. That's when you say to people here, you know, you're making that number up. I said, no, it's 350,000. And, yeah. you know, it's not intimidating. You're not daunted by the fact there's so many people because it's just they've done it for so many years that it's just it's a full day out. We, you gotta go, well, you've leaving gotta sucks. Getting in, easy. Yeah. Leaving, oh, my God. To go seven miles, it could take you three hours to get to your yeah. hotel. Yeah, it took us two hours to get back to downtown this year from the gate that leads you yeah. from the museum. You know what I do now? I walk I walk like a few blocks over now, and I jump on a Lime scooter or the, Uber, the scooters, uh, and I fucking- That's where I went wrong. 25 <laughs> minutes, I'm on a fucking scooter going like that, and because like every lane is going toward the city, so I'm like yeah. in traffic. I'm just like, that's the best way. Yeah, yeah. I, and seriously, I'm one of the biggest- you know, sellers of the race over here on goes, oh, why don't you go somewhere else, go to a different race? Uh, that to me, I never thought as a kid growing up in Adelaide, I'd even get to go to America, let alone oh, yeah. be there 30 times now. And it's my fourth Indy 500. And that to me is like a mid-year break and they just do it so well. And, you know, there's things we learn from that to bring back to Australia and go, we can enhance our events as well. Because, you know, it, is, it sets the benchmark and it should, should have after 100 years. Uh-oh, I think we got a surprise guest. Uh oh! <laughs> Jumping in. <laughs> they got the band back together. Where's the video? This we <laughs> oh! <laughs> we got a surprise guest for Matt Nalty, none other than his co-announcer for Stadium Super Trucks, the one, the only Sean Sermini. <laughs> we call him the Serm. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that American. Say? I I would think that would be a Sean Sermini place for sure. The American flag. Eh. Can you hear uh, me now? We can. Yeah, we can hear you. I know it's been a while, but geez, you've aged. <laughs> He's, well, bro, I tell you what, I got a new dentist. <laughs> 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 oh, man, I tell you what. You can get a lot of fun things in Mexico, but these these wrestling masks are number one. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Is that what you got? In, you got that in Mexico? What? During, during what? Baja? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. I said uh I want one that looks just like Knuckles. <laughs> Nacho <laughs> the game. There you go. So <laughs> we were one just, minute for that to come back. <laughs> we were just talking about the Indy five hundred. <laughs> we were just talking about the Indy five hundred and then you surprised us and uh thank you for surprising it. I mean I, I when I introduced Matt Nalty, I said, you know, Matt is one of a, a team of, of a two person team that is probably the best announcing duo for motorsports that I've ever personally heard. And it's shared by many drivers, not just SST drivers, but NASCAR drivers, IndyCar drivers are like, wow, those two guys are so fucking entertaining. They're like calling what they see. They're, they're bringing the excitement to it. And, uh, yeah, we, I know everyone I know misses this tandem and, uh, hopefully, you know, if anything, this is a little way I know Sean, I'm um, Sean's often doing his poor stuff and, Super, uh, I don't know what, uh, monster well, I, I'll shit. I'll tell you, thrill hearing that from you, that means a lot. Getting you guys back together, just even in this, is going to mean so much to all the Stadium Super Truck fans. So thank you guys for coming on. Sh uh, Matt, if if you just, sorry, hope I know you're not selfish, and I know you like sharing your time with Sean, so don't don't feel like I kind of like... <laughs> 
<laughs> like bum rushed your no, interview. It's exact, it feel like that. No, it feels, feel like that. That's what he did. He's sidetracking you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm messing with you. But hey, so Phil, I tell you, the thing is, both Nalty and I are pretty good at what we do. But we're a lot better when we do it together. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. And it's just one of them things. And, uh, you know, we just, uh, like I said, I mean, they, Matt's a lot better at it than I am. I'm not going to lie to you. I just make noise. He comes up with stats, does the homework. He does everything a professional should do. And then uh, then I show up. <laughs> and uh, he just, it's, I, I make noise and uh, I just help out where I can. But the two of us together are, are pretty awesome. But see, here's the thing. We were just talking about that. And Matt even said that, like, listen, I can't speak to like what like mid corner speed is or what the what the truck is doing or what the car is doing. So like I rather have the person that knows how to like so you've driven stadium super trucks. Shit, you helped build the fucking I have. Things. I've done all kinds of stuff, and I know when you guys are completely out to lunch and I know when it's working. And you're usually always out to lunch. And and during during some broadcasts, you'd be telling Nalty's like, Yeah, I think his brakes are fading. But you know that because you've driven them. Yeah. You've helped build them. You've been in the shop. Shit, like in the early days, uh, Sean here would build the damn ramps that I'd crash off of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there's some funny stories there. Did you need to make that one so big? And Sean would be like, "Yep, yeah, well, yeah." yeah. It's stadium super trucks. It's not just stadium trucks. Yeah, <laughs> any driver they would see like a big gap jump, and they'd be like. Did he really mean to make it that? And and then Sean would overhear him. He goes, "Wipe the sand out of your pussy." Yeah, but I'll get in the truck and do it. Yeah, I'll get in the truck and do it. <laughs> hey, hey, thrill. So yeah. th- let's not steal the thunder from uh, from my buddy Matt here. So good story. No, you, you remember the first time we met in Adelaide, right? Very much. I was just trying yeah. to bring it up. Yep. <laughs> I don't know yeah, this one. one. Well, it's a good story. I mean, so so I, I go over there all the way to over Australia, the other side of the world, right? And uh. And I know the series. I know what I'm talking about with that. And, but uh, we're doing live live TV, you know, and Fox and Channel 10 and all that. And, and like, oh, you'll have another guy, man. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to meet him. I'm like, I, I don't give a shit. Whatever. When I get there, I'm going to do what I do. And hopefully uh, he'll help me out because I've never done live television. Yeah. And we go there, I meet Matt. And I'm <laughs> leaning on him thinking, well, this is the live guy. I mean, this is what he does. So we end up doing our thing, and we just crushed it. We knocked it out of the park like Babe Ruth. The two of us came together like Boltron. That was 2015 Adelaide, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. that was that's the Sheldon Creed thing. Yeah, we were we were talking, and I'm like, "Hey, man, that first time, man, if it wasn't for you with all the live television, you know, uh, experience you had, I I don't know, I was nervous." He's like, "I never had any." I'm like, "What?" Yeah. He's like, "I I didn't do the live stuff. I thought you did." I'm like, "I've never done it either." <laughs> we had no idea. We we're both just leaning on each other, and uh, we just met and uh, j- just knocked it out of the park, man. And ever since then. Uh, we still, you know, Valentine's cards and everything back and forth. <laughs> Matt, Matt, you never done live at that point? No. So that was the very first day. So two weeks before the Adelaide 500, I was over in Perth doing my uh, sprint car TV. The sprint car stuff. And, That's not live? Yeah. No. No, we're doing it live now. Only this uh, past season has gone live on uh, the Seven Network, which is our biggest network in the country, which is great. Yeah. Um, the producer at the time rang me because I was only ever meant to do big screen coverage at the events. He goes, oh, at the event. Yeah. Yeah. So live at the event, but not live on television. But live live. Yeah. So I've done to that. That's for a couple of teeth. This is fucking awesome. Yeah. But- Two weeks out from the event, the um, producer at Supercars rings. He goes, hey, uh, with your Speedway background, um, do you want to call these stadium super trucks? And I had no idea what they were. I had to yeah. go to YouTube and go, well, these things are cool. Yeah. What's a stadium super you? Yeah. What's super Yeah, you? exactly. <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden, a week out from the event, oh, we don't know if they're going to bring anyone. And then there were bring someone. Oh, well, you might have to carry it. So all of a sudden, I had to go into prep mode because I had no idea what I was looking at. And then Sean walks in on the day. I thought, okay, cool. We got someone to work with. But then I was that wound up and nervous. I've introduced him as Sam. Sam, uh, yeah. I, that I remember. Yeah, Sam Sermini. Yeah, yeah. A, a great buddy of mine, Chad Nalon, who was standing in the background, of the commentary box, sniggered, like laughed. I turned around and didn't take any notice, but he wrote on a piece of paper, "It's Sean, not Sam, dickhead." <laughs> and I've looked at Sean going. He's going to kill me. <laughs> so later that afternoon, we're, we're um, on for the second practice session and we got introed by the, the host 
down the lane. And I've quickly apologised, said, oh, sorry for calling you Sam earlier today. He goes, oh, Mitchell, not a problem at all. And it really <laughs> broke the ice. Everyone in the room fell over laughing and away we went. And, and it's funny, like, <laughs> when you're doing that over there for, for Supercar Media, in the call box, there's other commentators that just finished or going to start. It's quiet. They're doing their homework. Yeah. You know, there's a few people in there and everyone's giving each other their, you know, their, their time to do their thing. And so there, there's a small audience in there and I don't need a big one. To yeah, get a laugh. No, no, not at <laughs> all. And he's like, sorry about that. I'm like, no problem, Mitchell. I got you. And everyone kind of looked around I'm like, yeah, I know what I said. That's funny. Right. <laughs> and then, and then we just, ever since then, man, it was uh, me, me and uh, Nalty were just uh, two peas in a really fucked up pot. And it's yeah. inseparable. <laughs> and, and honestly, and it, was, it, was amazing, it was an amazing ride. All of a sudden, it just took off. Yeah, the Adelaide race, though, that was, I mean, what, a, what you couldn't have a better event at that point to, like, put you two together because you had all the drama. You know, you had uh, shit, the Sheldon Creed rollover. That's, like, what, at 180 million fucking views? Um, yeah. Like, that, that caused amazing. Like, he's got a little rollover. <laughs> it's like... He's doing it again. Over those few years, Adelaide gave us so much amazing stuff and yeah. being such a, a massive race. And sadly enough, the people in the States don't understand what, what the clips all was and is now hopefully becoming again yeah. uh, because they screwed up for a couple of years. We know that, but, uh, but I mean, it just, it made, uh, made Matt and I's life so easy. I mean, it's, you don't have to dig for excitement. You don't, you don't have to be like, Oh, it's a boring one. We'll have to pull this one out of our ass. It was easy. I think most of them are like that. Adelaide just yeah. right. So the drivers. Just I mean, they don't call me the thrill for no reason. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who's been on more poles than the thrill? <laughs> <laughs> he is the pole. Is there a blown tranny <laughs> joke here? And that's the other thing. You guys would put in these like comments that like you know were fucking hilarious. Just even taken alone. But because like the drivers and even other race car drivers know like the backstory on him, it just made watching, you know, what you two guys did just that much more enjoyable. But again, like Paul Morris says, these guys see they they just commentate on what they see, and they don't try to make it something it's not. And because the action is good, their commentating is good. So. Well, well, that's the thing, you know, you, you just report the news and when it's that exciting all the time, it's, you know, it's, a, it's much easier to do. I mean, uh, Matt will tell you, uh, and, uh, and I know, I mean, there's a lot of other series that we do. They're wonderful that Matt and I do not together great stuff, but, uh, you work a little harder to really, uh, you know, pump up the crowd. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, uh, cause you got to magnify everything within reason, but with super trucks, you didn't have to do that, you yeah. know? But like I say, at every driver's meeting, uh, the, for the first driver's meeting of the year, for every series I do uh, with all the new drivers, I always tell them straight up. And sometimes I get a little slap on the hand. I'm like, listen, you guys want to be rock stars? Do rock star shit. Yes. If you don't care about that, then uh, then don't worry about it. But I'm, it's my job to report the news. And it's my job to make it exciting, even when it's not. So if you're doing dumb shit, I still got to make it good. So, you, you know, that's what's going to happen. If you do awesome shit, I got to make it good. Well, that's easy, you know, and Super Trucks just did that for us. I don't think there was ever a bad race when we did SST. It doesn't matter where we went. There wasn't too many places where we went, oh, oh that no. was a dull race. You Not know, even like, the race no, where right. the tire hit the fucking bridge. That was cool to call, That's right? true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, right. I mean, <laughs> shit, uh, what was it? Uh, race one in Adelaide in the first practice in, uh, in the warm-up lap. What does nuts roll it over and put it in the wall? Oh, Charles Dorrance on the, on the out Yeah. Lap. And everybody got out no. to push it back on its wheels, and that was on the race, not the practice. We were we were no, gritting. We didn't start the race yet. We were yeah, gritting. Yeah, we were doing our sight lap to grid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he was spotted up. Yeah, and then he fucking rolled. <laughs> like we're live on TV. <laughs> listen, I, I've driven these trucks for a very long time, and I don't even know if I could do that if I tried. Like that's pretty. I'm looking in the back. I'm like, how the fuck did he do that? Like we're going like thirty five miles an hour. <laughs> like you could, I mean, you could hit the fucking turn one curb at Long Beach and not do that at speed. I, I, I bite my tongue so hard over here, but yeah, I know what you mean. What? what, what why are you biting your tongue? You don't need to bite your tongue. <laughs> yeah, well, you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, when I when I when I crash, it's spectacular. Oh yeah, when the thrill crashes, Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. Actually, you know, there's nine other people knocked out. They weren't even part of it. <laughs> yeah. 
was it 2020 thrill when you had the rollover, but we didn't get it on camera. So we've talked it up in the practice session. And all of a sudden, I'm getting all these messages and videos through. And there he is. He's gone over the ramp behind the back of the pits. And it was one of the biggest rollovers I've seen in SST, but none of our cameras caught it because we weren't shooting at the time. It was all these social media videos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was in Adelaide. Yeah. And, uh, oh, that was brutal, man. And it was going on so long. I'm in the truck. We got an, my onboard, and then we have a fan photo, a video of it. So yeah. I'll send it to you. And I should probably post that shit. And then grinding against the bitumen, it was unreal. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but every time, like, there's a perfect shot. Whoever the photographer was in Australia got me upside down, and I'm in a Continental truck. I'm like, people are like, that's no way. That's Photoshop. I'm like, bullshit. Like, my roof would skip yeah. the pavement. And then I, but all four tires were popped, and I, I land, and I'm like looking, and this is the Thursday at Adelaide, so you know all the school yeah. kids are there in their uniforms, yeah. they're just fucking there. I, I hop over the fence. Medical's <laughs> like, we got to take you to medical. I literally was there signing autographs for an hour. Kids are putting their hats on me, and I'm just like, it was the coolest thing ever. And I'm like, fuck it, I'm okay. And I, <laughs> and Sean, you know as as well from building these trucks, if those tires didn't pop out, it just fucking drove away. But I'm like, well, I literally... you would, but what, what I, what I kind of was smiling about is knuckles. I know you haven't been in one of those, but you know how hard it is to blow four tires off beadlocks. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's a, that's a special kind of something too. It was yeah. fucking yeah. Well, that was my fault. The whole thing. <laughs> Crazy. That, that was user error. Hey, thrill, thrill knew it was the school day with all the kids there, and he just wanted to show them that maybe hey, study harder and don't be a race car driver because this is a yeah. bad idea. <laughs> Which is. <laughs> We were finishing Thrill, uh, uh, going to an ad break, and you, at the end of the session, you get the top 10, and then we show highlights. Yeah. Anyway, the background of the shot, there's all these school kids cheering at the fence, and I said, lots of school kids here today enjoying the action, and he goes, yeah, hey, stay in school, kids, you're going to end up doing our job. And I fell That's over. Right. He, had to, he had to throw the commercial break. I was having kittens. It was so funny. That was funny. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, cool. Yeah, that was funny. The other good one in Adelaide is when uh, Minge crashed, and then I'm coming around the bend, and he's standing like on top of his truck. God. Yeah, and he's like this, and and the fucking all the scrutineers are like, get the fuck that! Like they're like this, and he's just like, eh. and he's just standing there, right kind of where we would go in the paddock, like the last turn, and he was just like killing the crowd. But between the two of you. What do you? Th what was the best event that you think you called for SST, Matt? I'll let you go first. Oh. And as far as the whole thing, as far as the racing, uh, your co-announcer with you, like, where were you? Like, you know what? That was the you most entertaining, like a most fun. Or a single race. I'd say the weekend, the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, Gold Coast 2016. I think when Brabs and Creed were in the Traxxas trucks, and they did that last three laps, and they just weren't. You couldn't separate them. Oh, you guys, and honestly, your call, like the way you guys were playing off each other and then with fucking Brabham was like, and you're like, he can't lift, you know, just the way you were announcing, like he can't, he had, like you ain't catching Sheldon if you don't lift. And Brabham was like this right. and fucking all over the place. And that event's awesome. I podium. Yeah. There. That to me was probably, yeah, one that, that, that was a good one, man. That was a banger. I got to throw that in. Every time you raise a track. There, there were so many good ones. You know, I mean, it was, it, I agree. That one was obviously awesome. But, I mean, I don't know, man. Nux and I, with the, with the race and us together, we just clicked. So, there's, it's hard to say, man. We just had a lot of really great fucking yeah. weekends, man. But you know what that says? That's a testament to the series and the racers and the yeah, announcers. Absolutely. Because whereas, like, you could say, hey, an IndyCar, what was the best race from the – and you'd be like, oh, well, the Indy 500 of this. Like, you can – Literally, like to me, if you ask me what's the best NASCAR race I saw in the last 10 years, I'll tell you this past weekend in Chicago. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and yeah. if you've been to Australia, as I was telling Matt, it was no surprise that Shane Van Ginsburg and did what he did. Like, they, of course, those, yeah, I know. Those guys yeah. are fucking mental driving, you know? They, they just like, yeah. especially Gold Coast, where you know where our pits were. And they would come down that back stretch there, and it's like pop, 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 Yeah, through that chicane. Fuck, yeah. man! And they're fucking yeah. on two wheels. Like when you see a NASCAR truck, a, a car on two wheels like that. Right. Well, for this weekend, this past this past weekend. Yeah, exactly. When Shane was in Chicago. There you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shane. 
But uh, uh, he, hey, you know what? I'll be honest with you. He uh, he's lucky uh, Dale Senior wasn't around. Imagine uh, that. Whew. Yeah. Oh yeah. Old school guys well, back that's out. actually Ooh. I was telling people. I said, man, I'm shocked that like the NASCAR regulars, like old school, like the Dale Jarrett's of the world, and they ain't letting a new guy win. That's why it's like it took 60 years for a new guy to win. It, 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 you know, in 60 years for a new guy to win because it's like they'll fucking wreck you, <laughs> like you know. But I guess I guess yeah. you got to. I love that. I guess you got to catch them to wreck them though. Yeah, you, you do, but I, I love that. Uh, uh, I love the aggressive. That's what I love about super trucks. I love the aggressive racing. The, the, like, you don't have to take each other, but let's lean on each other real hard and sometimes push those limits. And uh, let's not, we, just because someone, you know, you know, rubs you the wrong way 17 times in the last four laps doesn't mean you got to take the jack handle out and hit them in the back after the race is over. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. I, that's what I loved about super trucks. I love about a lot of off road different forms. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I just like aggressive. Don't be a box about it. Kind of racing. Yeah. And, uh, and when shit goes wrong, take it out on the track. You know, in this day, these this day and age, a lot of racing like that is not that way anymore, man. No, not know, at all. Like, They're just pussies. Yeah. Now, have you been? Obviously, you guys. You know, you've moved on to Porsche and other things, and Matt still down in Australia. Only visits when he needs to come to a big race like the Indy Five Hundred. <laughs> but uh, you'd have you be there more often if I could? Exactly. <laughs> have you been pe- uh, Dick's last this is resort? Where to go to Dick's last resort. Exactly. Exactly. See, so <laughs> the the budding rivalry it's it's fucking hilarious is actually Max Gordon and Robert Stout because like yeah. and let's let's face Max Gordon uh, you know who his dad is Robbie Gordon well he trained him the right way Robin's racing and fucking Max. The one year, like two, two, three years ago, dumped Robert in the hairpin, and 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 uh, he basically did the Sheldon Creed, yeah. EJ Vizo move, fucking move you out of the way, and took the victory. And yeah, uh, that's great, though. Yeah, that's good. But Robert was like, "What the fuck? He took my win away from me." I'm like, "Did he take your win away from you, or did he earn himself a win?" Like this ain't. Hey, me and Dalty, we gave each other a few bucket runs at the bar before. Yeah. <laughs> we know all about it. Yeah. That's I true. Think oh, yeah. There's been only been a handful, even less, of drivers that have come into SST over the years that didn't get the concept and they were quickly sort of moved on or they go, well, this isn't for me. You know, if you weren't prepared to race hard and be prepared, there is a bit of theater in it. We, and Sean and I did our best to build rivalries over the years. Yeah. And you need that because that's what the sport's about. It's not a development category for someone to go learning to say, get into NASCAR or get into IndyCar or. Right. Sports cards. It is. It is a entertainment series first. Yeah, I wish you guys were announcing when um, when I spiked Bola Master's helmets because I would have loved to see how you guys called that shit because he was acting like, like a total <laughs> pussy. He, literally, I don't know if you've seen that race. Max Max made probably eighty on track passes on Bo <laughs> in this race, and you know we're only like 12, 13 laps, and then Bo would then miss a jump to pass him back, and I'm behind this like, what the fuck is this guy doing? And then. In the kink in the back stretch of Mid Ohio, as we're coming toward China yeah. Beach, he almost he chops Max. Max goes off in, in that kink, yeah, at like one sixty into the fucking grass. And if you're that fast, you you can if once you pitch sideways, you're going on a roll like Adelaide almost. So I'm like, fuck this. Max is like shit, Sean. We known Max when he was in diapers. <laughs> it's like <laughs> you know, like you know, or just about anyway. Um, so I'm like, fuck, I got to protect him. So like at the end, when the race ended, I just fucking parked that motherfucker. But then our bumpers got stuck together. So he gets out and then we have a little tussle and I smack the shit out of him. <laughs> but anyway. Hey, there, there's a little something. I don't know, Bo. I've never met him in person, but I tell you. And, uh, you know, I normally don't throw stones at glass houses, but he's out there a little bit. Oh, well, look what he did to, um, what was that? Ricky Johnson? Was that that guy? Where yeah. He came- yeah, it's only his idiot. In Nashville, he came from a fucking. Yeah. No- he came from another zip code. He came from like yeah. Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and wiped them out. His own He's teammate out. One that had fourth gear in one of them trucks, <laughs> yeah. and then just down in downship and drove through everyone. That was fucking funny as shit. But uh, yeah, no, he might he might want to sit down, lay down on the couch, and talk to somebody about that or something. He's got he's got some issues. Well, he hasn't come back. But <laughs> now, Nolte, did you see that? There's a video clip on social media, and it's of Sean, your buddy here. And 
they went to the race of champions, the rock. So the, the race of champions were like, Hey, bring SST trucks. And they brought that. And and then Bobby Chuck, Bobby was filming him. And he says, Hey, what's going on with all these, like, they're the best drivers in the world. Like, fucking, there's F1 drivers there. There's V8 drivers. There's IndyCar, NASCAR, best drivers all over the world. And Ryan Hunter Ray and maybe like two other drivers actually got in. Other than that, they like scrapped that category from being part of. So, what Race of Champions is, is you race different vehicles categories and you get time all different types of vehicles and all different disciplines and they say okay this is the champion right well sst the off-road was the off-road truck that they were picking right but obviously on asphalt and you have to hit jumps sean remember like you said hey man they just don't have the ball I i was generally bummed out about that because uh i was trying to bring back faith and uh, you know, because I, I I hate the fact that there's a lot of drivers out there that are really good, uh, but the, the, the money's always been there. And, and, and the world may never see the, the best drivers out there because of, because of that. And I was just starting to come around be like, all right, you know, meeting some of these guys, all different forms of motorsport. I'm like, all right, all right, you know what? Maybe maybe I'm not as, maybe I'm not as dead nuts. Maybe it's not as bad as it was. And then we get all these guys that are just stars from all over the world. And most of them wouldn't drive the trucks. It was a slow track. I mean, they never went over maybe 65 miles an hour, never hit a jump that, that close that fast, and they wouldn't do it. And I was like, generally bummed out. I'm like, really? I'm like, this is, this is fucked. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm not, I am, I, I'm not by no means a professional driver, but anything they offered me, I'd be like, where's my helmet? Let's go. And these are guys that are the best. SVG, he, 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 practice in one at uh, maybe I'm not supposed to tell him this his contract told him not to but SVG did it Craig Lowndes did it they jumped in at Norwell and they fucking went around the track and hit a jump and then so they were in an SST truck and I took one of the V8s like Paul's the V8s he has those replica ones and I'm in yep. it now I'm in fucking right hand drive right <laughs> and Paul Morris brings me in right away he's like Thrill you fucking almost hit the ramp with your left, like I almost, I was so close because you know I'm used to left hand drive. Yeah. I literally like almost went off the ramp with the V8 car with my left two wheels. Oh my god, that would have been. Oh no, I would have been in that fucking. <laughs> yeah. The board. Well, the thing is, you know, uh, you know, like uh, you know, SVG and stuff like. That. I mean, those guys. That doesn't surprise me. I mean, yeah, he, he grew up racing ATVs. He was a badass doing that. Yeah. And so he comes on a form of off-road and things. So don't put a truck's nothing for him. Yeah. You know, and, uh, yeah, it wasn't a race, but he just wanted to try it. But some other VH guys were yeah. there and they were like, fuck, no, we're not doing that. They're just like, nah, <laughs> yeah. I can I got a contract. I like, got fuck that. that shit, man. Sack up, dude. I mean, come on. <laughs> I, I, and I think we were, me and Nolte were talking earlier. Like there's people that have come to SST and Sean, you've seen it. And they're like, well, whatever how bad could it be at least i'll beat heinz and then i literally fucking have a 15 second gap on him I'm like what the fuck right like they don't understand it's they're it's hard to drive and the fact that yeah i started late in my career now i've been doing it over 10 years but i was telling nalty i was like i've been trained by robbie gordon ej Vizo, sheldon creed fucking alex yeah. crema paul morris you know, Toby, like all of these really, really good racers have been like giving me feedback on weekends and I soaked that shit up. So it's like, if you come in the SST and think you're just going to fucking podium right away without any real off-road or truck experience, you're going to get your ass handed to you and you might even hurt yourself. So Yeah, you can. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you, you've got to respect them because, uh, you know, I mean, they, they are purposely not easy to drive. They could be set up like anything else and be easy to get around the track. But then uh, the entertainment's gone. Yeah, you know, you're just like the class, and uh, yeah, I mean, they're they're uh, especially on asphalt. They're they're it's very difficult to make them to go fast, get the power of the ground, keep you know, it's uh, you know, you're running a you know a lighter sway bar, so the thing's rolling over to get the power of the ground. But sometimes, yeah. if you're not used to it, you feel like you're about to flip over. You know, you're you're taking right hand turns wide open, and your head's an uh, inch and a half away from the the, the fence. Exactly. You know, it's uh, it, it takes a little bit to do it. It's funny. New guys will come and they'll, they'll come up to me or even Robbie, like Robbie, like my truck's not jumping well, but I'm cornering well. And it's like we're like, okay, you got to pick one. Do you want to jump well or do you want to corner well? <laughs> like you can't have both. Right. So it's like 
Me, I rather fly well, and I'll figure out the rest. Because when you're in the air as an SST driver, like Matt, come on, you know, like you're a fucking passenger, and you're like, I'm. When I'm in the air, I'm like, hope I land. <laughs> what? Yeah, you're going pew pew. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what happened in Adelaide. That's why it's like Robbie's like, don't show that video. Don't. <laughs> So what happens now? Do we, Say do what? we get SST back really going? Is it going to get some more races? Are we going to get them down to Australia? I mean, they're sorely missed down here. I mean, yeah, I'd I love think, to see them back in Adelaide. Well, I think one, I think we need this tandem back right here. So I, 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 one, we need more. We need, we need more races. Morning, actually. Um, uh, as a group message that I'm on with a few people that we know, I'm not going to get into it because I'm not going to start rumors, but uh, <laughs> people that we know, uh, it was a talk that it, it may happen, um, but not for a little bit just yet. And I said, my only response was going back down under with super trucks entices me. That's all I said. It's awesome. Yeah. So there's yeah. been rumors and I've been in those discussions. I'm not on your group chat. You fucking should better add me. You piece yeah, of shit. I've heard about this one too. Yeah. Let's fucking <laughs> get the band back together. And honestly, <laughs> you and I start our own one through. <laughs> yeah, me, me and Matt are on our own. Like, and Matt will tell you, like, I've offered even, I'm like, Matt, listen, obviously Robbie has expenses and he's not going to be flying in a fucking announce or even no matter as good as you are. Like, he doesn't have IndyCar NASCAR money, so he's not fucking flying you in from Australia. But I'm like, Matt, if I can get you to the States, then you work out your deal with Robbie and you and Sean shake and bake. Like, because yeah. yeah. honestly – the two of you are what's best in my opinion. No offense to anyone else. It's just that the most compelling content for SST is is is, 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 is just you guys are infectious, man. You guys are so fucking good. And there's not a, a racer or fan that can say that anyone else is putting out a better product as far as when they're together. When Like, honestly, I'd like to see you two fucking call an Indy car race. I'd like to see you two call a fucking V8 supercar race Absolutely. or a NASCAR race. Yeah. Just to, just and and. It's only a matter of time when people say, fuck, let's give these two motherfuckers a shot. Because I think yeah, there, there's no race out there, series out there that I wouldn't go right to the booth with Nalty right now and not feel like we can't. We'll both be nervous as hell. We may be dry heave a little bit for a minute, but we'll knock it out of the damn park. <laughs> and, and here's the thing. And, and one thing you know, Nalty's going to have all the statistics. He's going to have fucking charts and fuck. Like, Nalty be like, yeah, Bill, this is- I'm not going to show up with shit. Yeah, exactly. You're showing up with a hangover. That's about it. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, he better be ready to go because I'm going to show up unprepared. And yeah. it's going to be awful. Awesome. Yeah, but that's the best part of it, though. We used to do the CBS openers at the track, so Texas and those Detroit. Those were fun. I've seen some outtakes from those, and they're fucking hilarious. Like, the shit that never made it, I'm like, release so- that. I would do these scripts in the in yeah. the hauler, and he goes, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm putting the script together." He goes, "A script?" And I went, "Yeah." And he goes, "Dude, I just make this shit up." And I said, "Yeah, I know, but I can't do that." So I'd write what I'm going to say, and in brackets <laughs> it said, "Serm dribbles here." Yeah. So when I'd stop talking, he'd pick up and go, "How does he do that?" I've had yeah. to rehearse this, and he just waffles it out. And I'm like, "Yeah, right." Okay, yeah, but good. if you are <laughs> planned like that, and Serm dribbled there. What if his dribble didn't coincide with what you were about to say next? It often didn't. That was the thing. We had to just make do with it. <laughs> you don't know. Why uh, better it, bro? Yeah, because <laughs> even even like the looks you would give each other, if one would say something, I would be like, this is fucking gold. Like that's in itself. <laughs> like you could turn off the race and and some of the shit right? was just gold between the two of you guys. It's, it's like, like looking at Nalty being like, what? We're going to talk about that? That's dumb. Let's talk about yeah. this. Yeah. And try yeah. and put me off. Even the box he'd do that, I'd, I'd be picking up or going through a grid and he'll be staring straight at me or making some hand gesture and I'd be trying not to look. It was a, uh, I guess at the time when we did it, we didn't really, um, we didn't appreciate how good it was. Like I've obviously when COVID uh, yeah. hit us, we had plenty of time to sit around and watch um, YouTube videos again. And it was really cool to go back and see it all again and go, man, it was really, really good. We, I think yeah. from, from the, and again, I know a lot of fans, like, I mean, like the fucking Shook family and a lot, like there's so many fans that keep in touch with me and they're just like, man, like during say from 15 to 20, like when you guys were locked in and the series was locked in and we're doing like 20 fucking dates a year. And that's the mm-hmm. thing, like who wants to, like if there's five, four races, that doesn't, you know, let's face it. You guys don't fucking do this for not getting paid like it's work for you you're professionals yeah you deserve pay so you can't be like hey 
you know, I got a contract over here and this company's paying me a lot of money to do this. I can't then not show up a couple weekends to go do your one or two off. So it doesn't make sense. So, if, but if, you know, SST had like 10 full dates in the US and then seven in Australia, as Sean said, that'll excite him because then he knows, hey, 17, 20 weeks out of my year, I'm fucking busy and it's fun. Yeah. Because, like, I don't know. I've never seen the two of you not have fun at a weekend. And even, <laughs> like, I say this to people. I'm like, listen, SST is a fucking – is a series where you could finish 10th or 15th and fucking still have – come home fucking dying laughing like you had the best time of your life. <laughs> yeah, and if you're not dying laughing, go back and listen to the broadcast. You will be exactly. when you're done. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking – especially if you're a driver and you have, the, like, the inner workings of it and you fucking die. Like, oh, well, he blew his tranny. <laughs> Oh, that's we all get to talk about. What happened? Yeah, it was, that got that happened at Sydney, uh, 2015, and <laughs> that you means remember a it? Wow, different over here, and and Sean's calling away, and Neil Crompton, who's like our voice of V8 supercars here. Yeah, I know Neil he's Crompton at the, end is. Of the table doing his notes, and Sam <laughs> intros it with, and uh, Barrett Jenner out there today. He blew a tranny early today in qualifying. He's out there, and and Crompo took his glasses off and went, what? And Sam goes, yeah, I went there. <laughs> and we're not on camera. I look at him in the booth. I don't. I just look. I go, I know. I know what I said. <laughs> and if it, people don't know, uh, Burt oh. Jenner is the son of Caitlyn Jenner. So tie that but all I, together. I don't think I said it about Burt. It was Scotty Steele. Was it Scotty Steele? Yeah, it was Scotty Steele because he had uh, lost his No, I his thought breaks. it was Burt. Yeah, I wouldn't say it about Burt. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Good. Still we're gonna have to go uh, back. He, had, yeah. he, he, he lost a he lost a tranny. I'm sorry, he blew a tranny in qualifying and started up on the front row. And he went into turn one in in, uh, in the race and lost his brakes and just went in the runoff. And I'm like, oh, Scott, he still looks like he lost his brakes. Tough day for him today. He blew a tranny earlier on in qualifying. Oh, we'll have to go back. <laughs> and everyone's like, look at me. I'm like, yeah, no. I know exactly what I said. Yeah, you guys, you guys came up with some funny shit. Like one time, fucking the guy, uh, Nolt, Nolt, Nolton, Nolte, not Nolte, you're Nolte. Uh, Matt Nolan. Matt Nolan fucking Nolan. just wipes me out, and I'm in the world gym trucks, and he goes, and Hines, one of you goes, and Hines gets bench pressed out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's rare I drop any comedy, but that was one of my finer moments. And then one time, Sermini's like, "Yeah, Bill, they're over looking at the at the gym, and you're not working out." <laughs> like, like I put on the pounds or something. We- hey guys, we're three leopards wide. Yeah. Oh, that was a really good one. So me, Brabham, and I think Steel were three wide, <laughs> and Def Leopard was our sponsor. And he goes, yep. "They're three leopards wide." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Dude, that was a lot of a lot of cat cat out there, boy. I tell you, Fucking three oh, balls flying. Th- three went in, and like, yeah, I, I lost out. I, I came out out of that corner last. So, but hey, Matty Brown and Scotty still. I uh, I'm about to lose my phone here. Why? Because I because I don't have a charge. That's, no, that's well, not good. Are you off the grid, Mountain Man? Not far off of it. <laughs> now, the way I like it. I, I know. Do you live in New York or like Massachusetts or Vermont no, or New West Hampshire? Mass. Oh, you are in Mass. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm about three and a half hours west of Boston, about three and a half hours north of New York City, and about an hour and a half away from Albany, New York, kind of out in the sticks. But cool. you probably prefer it that way. I do. That's why I can just open up the garage door and fire up the old YZ250 here and the old sled and just let her heat. Look at that shit. I bet winter's fun in the. It's from mini house. All huh? the shit you can still die on. I, I still ride them all the time. You got all your motorbikes and all that, your dirt bikes and shit. And your- yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Shit, I, I'll take the old ski to uh, 800 here, right up the road, wide open in the middle of summertime. The neighbors love it. I'm surprised Burt Jenner hasn't been <laughs> to your house because he has all that's the shit all he loves and shit. Yeah. Right. But if you got to drop off, that's fine. But thanks for jumping in as a guest, and then me and Matt will finish up. Absolutely. I know you you guys will finish up each other. That sounds great. But uh <laughs> But anyway, I would like to so, having fun. It's been a long time. But yeah, buddy. but there there are there there are some unconfirmed rumors that uh SST may be going back to uh the uh beautiful country of Australia. And if that happens, you guys we gotta get the band back together because uh, th- there's nobody better than you two guys doing it. So that, that's I, I would, I would, uh, heartfelt. I know? would love the opportunity to get back in the booth with Knuckles, man. There's, there's nobody better to with. 
But obviously, Same, contracts and you guys got to get paid what you deserve. And you guys, you know, as, as the the more years go on, and the more you're calling races, your price goes up. And people, obviously, we know that, and it's going to take some some so uh, free agent signing or something like that. But uh, good luck negotiating. That's that's right. Not part of me. I'm just a driver and fucking has this retarded podcast. So. <laughs> Yeah, you're a good flag waver for so. Two hundred percent more retarded tonight. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sean, for being a surprise guest. But uh, you yes. can pop off <laughs> that. I'm your legend. Hey, love you both, man. See you soon, brother. <laughs> See you, fellas. See you, mate. <laughs> so, Matt. Yeah, we'll finish up soon. But I, 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 I got a he, headache for all of that. <laughs> yeah, I told him. I told him that you were coming on. He's like, "Hey, I want to surprise my mate." And uh, that's so good. I wasn't expecting that. That's really good. Thank so you. <laughs> I was like, "Fuck it, let him do it." And then yeah. uh, <laughs> you know how he is. You can't say no to him because then I'm gonna yeah. run into him whether he's at the Porsche race or something else. And you know, uh, he was on social media the other day. He's like, "Yeah, it's the best." Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I fucking email. I'm like, "Bullshit, you fucking know that's not the best category." Like, you know, he's has to, you know, made to do that. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So and he's like, whatever thrill. And, uh, yeah. So, um, obviously some of it, we just, talked just, to- just before you go on, he was, he was always good to me. Um, right from the beginning, we, we clicked instantly. I mean, we said that during that, um, call then. Well, you could but see it clicked- on the air. You know? Yeah, but we clicked more so outside of ours as well. We come from a similar sort of background in life and, I was going through a bit of a rough time when I first met him and then my mum passed away later in the year and we're in LA doing the first race for TV and he didn't know how to say it to me or anything and we just talked about it, you know, we broke the ice and away we went and that's something because I understand how he works, he understands how I work and that's, you know, it's hard to find in this gig. You know, you work in such a competitive industry that you you don't tend to be mates with people that are doing the same job as you because it's such a competitive market but me and him because they could be taking been, your job yeah yeah but there's never been any of that with him it's always you know we know it we stay in our lanes so to speak and he knows his role i know my role and there's never ever been egos take over and I, you know it's very hard to find and, and you know, so i've noticed that too in a lot of broadcasts and you know obviously you know we have a guy named ken stout this now and he's really good he's got a good voice but then like he doesn't have like a Sean with him, you know. Yeah, it's like he's per, very solid. Per, he ra- yeah, but per what what's what's bad about the broadcast? I'm saying is he gets a new person every time. So it's yeah, like fuck, I got to train a new guy every yeah. fucking time, and they talk over him or they don't like when he like tosses it to them. They're quiet, and he's like fuck, yeah. you know, and he's like so. That would be if I was an announcer. That'd be so frustrating. Whereas when you and even even now when you do Aussie cars and stuff in V8, it's like whoever you're working with, they know when you're pausing. Like it's like I don't know if you train them or it's just you work so well with them. Whereas they're picking up where you're leaving off and vice versa. And like you and Sean, just there's never that Wait. like uncomfortable silence where we're getting now in in Stadium Super Trucks, but. Like they're just like I feel bad for him because when you listen to him in other categories where the two people are like together, like he's where fine. he's working with a, a a guy he knows or had done races with him, that's fine. But when it's like, hey, I'm getting this new guy and I don't know shit about the series, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, and they don't know when to talk, and it's like fuck, and it, and it does make for a horrible broadcast. It really does, and it's not it's not on them it's just the pa- it's just what it is you know what i mean yeah and the sam probably undersells himself a bit there he doesn't come in planned or prepped he's got a lot of you know inside oh, yeah, knowledge yeah, yeah. himself so he can make it work with someone like me i've got a i've got to plan that out and if, it's how i was trained i had some good you know, mentors back here in australia that were like you know you've got to be planned you've got it doesn't but you've got to sell it like it's coming naturally and i think i do that reasonably well but it's nothing worse than having to train someone uh, but I had to do it this year on two occasions where I had three different announcers on the same category over the weekend. And oh, so really each hard. race, was that yeah. an Aussie race or Aussie car yeah. race? Yeah, Aussie yeah. racing cars. So, yeah. um, But, like, we have Craig Lowndes in the box now, Garth Tander, who are both Bathurst oh, legends. guys are champions. awesome. Yeah. And a couple of years back, like, we didn't know because they weren't really good in the beginning. They came in and they were very green. and But 
I didn't want to say anything and Chad didn't want to say anything. And we get to end of a session at Sydney in 2021 and and Garth just goes, you need to tell us what we're doing wrong. And I said, but yeah. I'm not going to tell a Bathurst champion what to do. He said, no, but we're in your world now. So once I got the green light to sort of say what I was feeling, they listened and all of a sudden, you know, they've advanced themselves now because of that, which is cool. So, but. Well, I um, think you got to understand like with a Lowndes and a Garth Tanner and all of those guys, think about when they first got into a race car or whatever it was, they yeah. sucked. And it was through feedback. Okay. Yeah. Through, like when I first got in shit, I couldn't even go one, around one fucking hairpin without rolling. Yeah. EJ Vizo's <laughs> upside down. Like what happened? Bill? I'm like, I fucking rolled. Get me out. Right. Like, yeah. you know, it, funny. Fu- I wish they had that on tape, but my point is if anyone's going to listen and then apply what they're learning, it's going to be a race car driver like that. And, you yeah. know, I think, I've met Lowndes and didn't meet Tander, but uh, even like SVG and Scotty Mack, all the guys I met, like they want it. It don't matter what they're doing. They want to be the best at it. Yeah, of course. And Scotty, you better watch Lowndes. Lowndes is going to want your job. You know, that's how yeah. you know, like, I'm just kidding. Like, <laughs> so, um, but obviously when you're dealing with a Sean, he don't want your job. He knows it takes two. You know, yes. he knows there needs to be – it. it you can't do it with one person. They've tried to do SST. They've tried to do races where it's just one person calling it, and it's just like, fuck, man. It's there's no, it it just no flow, and it's still like it's almost becomes monotone, and there's no inflection, there's no excitement, and and um, man, like I said, so obviously the rumor mill. We're me and you aren't privy to be on that text chain, but if that happens, <laughs> I'll fucking let you know. I'll be like, yo, get the Bill Hines suite at the Carrera slums ready. You know what that is, right? <laughs> I, I've heard it a couple of times now, and like you know, Adelaide's obviously back on the map. It was a great return last year. I, I think it's Gold Coast missed. and Adelaide, I think. Right, um, and look, Adelaide just misses having that. I mean, Adelaide was sort of rushed back in last year, and they did a phenomenal job in five months to have the track rebuilt, repaved, yeah. and ready to go with some really cold weather in the lead up. But now they've had twelve months to plan and be ready for it. And I think you know the Adelaide guys understand the the show aspect that they need to have. Yeah a category like SST at the oh. event. And there's plenty of time. We're in daylight saving. We can squeeze it in somewhere. It's well, you know, Adelaide, I'm not saying it's a selfish point of view, but it can work. It's funny. Adelaide, I mean, it's a road slash street course. It's yeah. like, you know what I mean? It's not like a Gold Coast or a Chicago or a Long Beach. Part of that track, because it's in that park, yes. and then some of it's, what's that long one, Wakefield? Uh. Yeah, Bartels Road to Kettable Terrace. And Where then the kink is. Lanes. Yeah. 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 Turn eight. Yep. Turn eight. So, um, like that area is the street part, but yeah. on the inside, isn't it like down the front stretch? Is, that's like a part of the park, right? Yeah. So that was the old Formula One track from back in the day, um, which yeah. now has been repaid for the first time ever. And yeah. um, that's well, with that the trucks, we don't care about that. Yeah. Oh, the <laughs> only the only track we ever cared about where it was like, oh, okay, well, two was the the back stretch of of Detroit especially when it yes. rained cuz it was oh, like yeah. bambi on ice we're all over the fucking place and then uh <laughs> Toronto same thing when it rained going into turn i think it's 3 like that right hander yep. because there's like concrete and asphalt to get and it's like okay what sh- what do I, where can I find grip on the concrete or the asphalt? What a combo. <laughs> yeah. And it's right there. So you're just like, shit, I wish they repaved that. But other than that, yeah. it doesn't affect us like it would affect like a V8 supercar, yeah. NASCAR, or IndyCar. But, um, but yeah, like, wouldn't you say like that Adelaide track is kind of like a combo of a street slash, but I, I still think it's one of the best prepared events and tracks i've ever been at in the world like it's up there like as far as the safety features yeah. their attention to detail you know their k rails don't move if you hit them yeah <laughs> you, adelaide sort of set the benchmark when formula one went there in 85 that's a long time ago now but they yeah. set the benchmark for street tracks across the world and they just carried that over to when the v8 started there in 1999 it was just like going to a formula one race except f1 wasn't there now like they had the first yeah. year had 70,000 people there, which is unheard of because the race it replaced at Amala, which was about an hour out of Adelaide, would get 30,000 for the whole weekend. And you took it to the streets and it just worked. But having the injection of SST there back in 2015, because nobody knew what it was, it yeah. had a cult following. And I think now there's been 
you know, such a break from it all that it could be a good time to bring it back out now and and hit the ground running, you know, because the world's back to normal. Trying to do it, like we tried to run that series in 2021 and it was it was tricky with all the the restrictions we had well, here to do, but now it's clean sailing. It's, it's probably but I also a good think I also think that was missing like obviously Paul Morris needs to be there. I really think that the characters like you like the Australians you have, like the Toby Prices and the Matt Minges and the, and yes. the Paul Morrises, you need those. But you also needed the some of the Americans, me, Robbie yep. Gordon, and because we bring that drama. Like, who else is going to chase a fucking guy down the back stretch? Like, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like you know, yeah, and, like and, six right? Americans, six Australians, or yeah. You know, so, so my point is, like, you need that, you know, and uh, yeah, like you you need you. It, it just made it like us versus them or them versus us. But even reality, you're not me, but you know, I'm drinking my iced tea. You guys are all drinking your beers, but <laughs> we're all like, that's the thing. Unlike other series, we're all friends at the end of the day for the most part. Yes. And like, yeah. you know, I could wipe out Sean Richardson and he could be like, Hey mate, let me buy you dinner. Or yeah. Something. You know, yeah. there's never any hostility in there, which was, which is what made it so cool. But if that's if the rumors are true and maybe it happens this year, then that's exciting. I'd just love to come back and call SST regardless. I'd love to just get back to the USA and have a have another crack at it at yeah, some point. I think, so I think next year for SST we'll have more. Uh I think we're only doing like two or three more races because of yeah. you know, listen, Robbie's got you know, he bit off a lot with the UTVs, he's making a really good can't blame him for wanting to focus on no. that. Yeah. But and then any time actually any time in the past where Robbie missed a weekend for SST, all the fucking shit went to hell, you know, <laughs> like just, it, it just, I mean, we got through it, but it was like, fuck. But so that's probably in the back of his mind. Like when I'm not here, something goes wrong. Yeah. Um, I think if Sermini was around, cause Sermini can also run that back end side. Yes. Like the, cause he could build shit and do shit and move shit around and rant. Like it, I think Robbie in order for him to have SST running without him there, would have to know that, hey, I have a guy on the operation side yeah. that can make sure. And whereas, like, hey, Chris was a nice guy, that, uh, but fucking nobody won't listen to him. He was a too nice of a guy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, so the best <laughs> thing he could do was, like, wave a flag for the start-finish yes. line, you know? If and there was 24 hours in a day, Robbie found 38 hours. You know, it was yeah. he was just the... Just a machine, and what he does is is incredible. I, I for one, very gratefully gave me the chance in 2015. He took a gamble on a guy from Australia and said, "Come across and call, you know, my races in the states." And that was, you know, so there was never anything more than a handshake. It was, you know, come yeah. across. There's no contracts. There was he honored everything. He was, yeah, you know, a very well, that's very Robbie Gordon for you. If he if yeah, he likes you guy. and he trusts you, you're good. Yeah, if you don't. I feel sorry for you. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, and he'd often, you know, send you an email if he wasn't happy with something, or he said, "We just yeah. need to try this," or you make sure, and never a problem. It was, yeah, he was really good guy to deal with, and yeah, you know, I was very, very privileged, mate, to to be involved with the series, and you know, I'm hoping one day we can all do it again, and it sounds, it sounds, you know, positive that it could head that way again. That'll be, that'll be. Well, a I super. hope so. So, well, thank you for coming on. We're gonna have to do. The, I, I actually was telling my producer and videographer, I said one day we should do a live where we have you on, Sean on, and then a couple drivers like Brabham, sure. maybe Sheldon, and we do like a fucking live Q and A, and I think that'll be fun yeah. as shit. So, obviously, you're in Australia, so. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Maybe we, if we have to go back to Australia one day, we'll do it live, remote from Australia. I know, I know, my videographer. He was at Long <laughs> Beach, and he was like, "Fuck, sign me up for all these races." And yeah, uh, yeah he brought uh, what was that guy's name again? Scott. Scott. Yeah. So they, the two of them, they they were like shake and bake. They fucking loved it. They asked, they especially liked the dinners. The yeah, food. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> five 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 no East Lopra. <laughs> Yeah, the it was pretty good, right? <laughs> yeah, the one night's like, well, Bill. Actually, the one night they're like, we're just going in and out burger. Fuck it. You know, I was like, well, there's nothing yeah. bad about that either. No, no, uh, the American culture. Yeah, it's it uh, it suits me. I missed it when I came back this year to Indy. I was I was wondering whether it had all passed by because I hadn't been for so long. And when I landed into LAX, and I went, no, I have missed this place. I still feel like I need oh, to be yeah. here. It's often. pretty, spe it's, it's, uh, and I saw your social media. You said, "Welcome to the USA." You posted something like that. I'm like, "Yeah, 
Knuckles is back. So it's like- because there was a time, mate, when I was sitting there in COVID in 2020, I didn't think I'd ever get back to the USA. Like, you know, I'd gone from doing seven or eight trips a year over yeah. there to just nothing. And I sat at home. Dad come depressing. and it was great to see my dad, but I said- Sat at home with a beer in your hot tub thinking like, this yeah. is depressing. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yes, the world famous hot tub, but I found yeah. out last night it's quite popular here. I didn't realize it, it was is, that. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you got some birds in it with you, one on your left, one on your right. Yeah. <laughs> that was uh, the best investment I made, by the way, during COVID. It cost me $1,500 that spa, and it's oh, fuck, paid yeah. for itself. <laughs> well, it's good for mental health, man, because like you said, it's like, shit, are we ever going to be able to do anything ever again? And who knows? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, 2020, when we did that last race at Adelaide, it, it just it felt like. You know, something bad was coming. We all knew that it was lurking, but yeah. it didn't feel right at Adelaide that year. And then, you know, we knew in a couple of weeks I couldn't have my 40th because they shut the world down on my 40th birthday. And, you know, well, if we go back there now, this year, me and Sir Minnie are taking you out for your 40th. Redo. It could be dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> like a, I don't drink. So I, but, at um, least you got a designated professional driver, which is exactly. Well, you saw me drive. So that's even more right. dangerous. Yeah. But th- but thanks for coming on. I really appreciate thanks, it. Mate. I know you got to get to the track right now. It's what time is it there in Townsville, uh, Australia? Coming up to 11 a.m. Thursday morning. So now you're in the Northern Territory, right? No, Northern Queensland. Northern so, Queensland, yeah. Yeah. So you're pretty much the top of Australia, but to the the east. East. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, looking forward to a good weekend. But thanks, mate. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Be well, everyone. Now let's go.